Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial. This one is on functions. Functions can be confusing, so I want you to pay close attention and think about what they do. They really are useful, and I think once you get the hang of them, they're going to be pretty easy for you. Okay, let's take a look. So perhaps the best comparison I can make to a function in average daily life is something like a recipe. When we're cooking food and we figure out something that works really well and that we'd like to use in other meals or pass on to friends, we write it down and make a recipe. And what the recipe does, and you can see in the background here one of my mom's famous recipes, is it tells you all the inputs you need so, for example, this one needs sugar and cream and other things. And then it tells you a method of actions to take using those inputs. And it promises that it will give you an output. So in this case, it's going to make some cookies, 12 of them. That's the same idea that a function handles in Python. It makes your code reusable so that it's consistent and repeatable. Let's look at how we define them. So first of all, when we define a function, we're going to use a DEF def keyword. And once we put the def keyword, after that we put the name of our function. The name of a function, just like variable names, should start with a lowercase letter and it can't use any of the reserved words as its name. If you have multiple words in the name of a function, words after the first one should be capitalized for readability. Once you've put your function name, then you add parentheses. And inside of those parentheses, you can add some arguments if there are going to be any. We'll see some examples in a minute. And then after the parentheses, you put a colon. Now whenever you see a colon in Python, and it's true here with functions too, indented code after that is considered part of the function. So the next line should be indented and it should tell you something to do as part of the function. And then optionally a function can have a return statement, and the return statement will return whatever comes after it to the code that called the function. So you can think about it as recipes used to make a meal. And if I'm going to make a meal with a salad and a main dish and those pralines you just saw, I would be calling a salad function, I'd be calling a main dish function, and I'd be calling a pralines function. And each of those functions would return to me their output. So in this case, a salad, a main dish, and pralines, and that would make up my meal. Okay, let's see some examples. Now to show you examples this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to a coding program called Visual Studio Code, where I've set up some things to get us started. So to begin with, you can see that I'm in the code window here, and I've got some function definitions already typed. So uh, hello world is there and if I run hello world so let's go up here and run the Python file in the terminal. The terminals down below. We can see that hello world this is a functions tutorial printed out and there's that text and notice I've got that syntax I just explained. So I've got a def statement, I've got the name of a function, I've got some parentheses, and I've got a colon, and then I have some indented code after that, and that is the code that goes into my function. And after that, I called my function and it printed. So there we go. Now let's look at a little more sophisticated example. So this time, I'm going to use the return statement. The difference between a print statement and a return statement 
is that the return gives you something you can then use in other operations. So for example, here I'm going to uncomment my result equals line. I'm going to capture the result of the hello world return function. And then I'm going to present print the result. And because I know it's a string, I'm going to apply this upper method, which is one of the methods of the string object. And that'll allow me to do a little bit more with it. So let's go ahead and run the file again in our terminal. And sure enough, we can see the statement from our first one. And we can see the statement from our second function. And sure enough, it's all caps. And I could, of course, change it around. If I wanted to, I could use lower or other methods of the string, or I could use it in some other code if I wanted to. So the return keyword is actually very useful. We can return individual variable values, or we could return a list full of variables. There's a lot of different options, but the return statement allows us to then use whatever happened in our function somewhere else. Whereas, say, putting a print statement just dumps whatever is in the function out to the terminal console without our ability to then do anything else with it. OK, I'm going to comment this one, this example, back out. And let's take a look at another one. So here, I've actually created an, a named argument. Functions can take named arguments. And the name of the argument, in this case, I'm going to use a person's name. So that's a little confusing. Why don't we call it first name? There we go. And there we go, first name. Voila. Now, my greet function takes a first name and then says hi. So if we go ahead and run it, let's go ahead and run it down here. Sure enough, we see, hi, Larry. This name, first name, is a variable that's only available inside the function. So when I pass greet Larry to the function, Larry gets relabeled as first name. That becomes a key for referencing that value of Larry. And inside the function, then, it says, use it right here. Use first name right here. I don't have that variable available anywhere else outside of the function, just in the function. All right, I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. And let's think about numbers for a minute. Functions get a lot more useful when you're doing things with algorithms, different kinds of numbers or equations that have special uses. So averaging is a type of algorithm. And we know this algorithm. So in this case, I can define a function called average. It takes a, an argument or a parameter called nums. And we haven't explained what nums requires, but it requires a series of integers or perhaps floats. And what it will do is it will take, it'll create a total. It'll create a count and initialize those at 0. Now it's, it's initializing the total as 0, which means it's an integer. And you'll notice in Visual Studio Code, when I hover over variables, I can get more detail because I have some extensions for markup installed for Python. That's really one of the values to using a coding program like Visual Studio Code or Atom or PyCharm. They give you more feedback about how your code is doing and whether it's healthy. Now, once I have these numbers, I can use them like a list. So we're looking for a list of numbers. And then we're going to take each number inside of that list. We're going to add it to the total. We're going to keep track of our count. And then what is an average? Well, an average is that sum total divided by the number of numbers. And then we'll print that out. 
So we know we have a list of numbers. We want to know what the average is. And let's go ahead here and say average is average. OK. I'm going to save that. And now let's run it in the terminal. And here we go. Our average is 42.5. Great. It gave us the result. We were able to present, print it. If we wanted to use 42.5 somewhere else in our code, we could. Let's go down and think of how we might change this a little more, because functions can have multiple arguments. So here I've defined a further argument uh, called this list name. So in this case, maybe we want to be able to average a bunch of numbers and also denote what their name is, such as my grades. And it's basically the same code, except this time what it's going to return is a string that's formatted explaining what the average is, instead of returning a number. So if I go ahead and uncomment and run this file in the terminal, we can see that my first function still returned the number 42.5. My second function returned a string sentence saying average of my grades is 42.5. They would serve different purposes. The main illustration here is that we are able to go ahead and put in a multiple argument sequence in the definition of a function and then use those in a function. OK, I'm going to show you another one. Now, this one's a little different because what we've just been doing is defining our own average functions. Well, it turns out Python has those built in already in a library called Statistics. And notice here, I'm, this whole time I'm using my same numbers list that I defined earlier. So when we look up here, we can see that I defined this list of numbers. So I'm using the same one all along. Also notice that when I put numbers in to the average function, internally in the function it relabeled my list as nums. And then it referenced it as nums inside the list. That's a good practice to actually not use the exact same number or same variable name outside of the function definition as you do inside, just so it's clear to you which one is being used. OK, let's go down and take the closer look here. So this statistics library has a mean function. In order to use the mean function in the statistics module, all I have to do is import statistics, which is built into Python. And then I can call statistics.mean numbers. OK, let's do that. And then we're also going to go take a look at what that mean method of the statistics library is, what that function is. All right, let's go ahead and run it. So run in terminal. And here we have, here is the mean from the statistics module, 42.5. OK, let's take a closer look at it. At that. I'm going to type Python down here. And when I type Python, it gets me into Python in interactive mode in the terminal. And I'm going to type import statistics. OK, I've done that. And now I'm going to type help statistics, OK? And when I help type help statistics, if I scroll all the way down, so let's scroll all the way down, I'll see that it tells me where the file is, in fact. Now I'm going to go ahead and do what it says. I'm going to command click on it. And it opens up a Python file. Look at that. So the statistics library or module in Python is, in fact, written in Python. And if I search in here, 
I'm going to search on mean, and let's just, in fact, why don't we search on def mean? How about that? We can actually find the definition of the mean function. And we can see that it has a comment here that tells you how to use it. And then it has the actual code. And there it is. So the statistics module is just a big Python file full of function definitions that you can import and reuse when you need to do math work in Python. And it's a little different than things we've seen before, a little more sophisticated. But it converts whatever data it receives into a list. It handles different kinds of situations like fractions and decimals and it looks for any errors. It uses a couple of keywords we haven't seen, like raise to show errors just in case, and assert. And it's using this sum function, which is also defined earlier in the file, as well as the convert function. It's using an assert keyword just in case there's an error to make sure that everything is working correctly. And then it's going to return the result of the function. Voila. So that's essentially what you do when you import modules is you import these capabilities. Okay. One last thing I want to talk about in reference to functions. Occasionally, this is not something we're going to be getting deep into, but you might run into it when you start getting into writing code yourself or making your project. You will see functions with asterisks and then args or something like that or double asterisk keyword args and what these kinds of functions do is they allow you to put in a bunch of values that will then be used inside of your function so if we use this arg list example and I run it, so let's go ahead and uncomment. Notice I've got I love learning Python here. It's going to bring in these arguments and then print them. Oops, sorry, I've got to get out of my Python there. And now let's run it again in the terminal. Okay. And we can see I've got I love learning Python down here. All right. So it was able to take in a bunch of different arguments. I didn't have to define each one in advance. That's the key. And then it just took all of them and printed them out. So I didn't know how many there would be. And it allowed me to then have them all work. And similarly, what this kw args is, is it allows you to send in a dictionary of keyword arguments. Dictionaries are something we don't talk about a whole lot, but what a dictionary is, is it's a series of keys and values, and this is the way that you can unpack all of those. So this particular keyword arg dict example, dict example, uh, unpacks a bunch of keyword arguments and prints them to the screen. And so if I go ahead and uncomment and then run this, we can see down here A equals I, B equals love, C equals Python. And that's a pretty good sense for you, hopefully, of what functions do in Python. I think if you remember these definition instructions, you're going to be able to easily create some functions and reuse them and become a more efficient programmer. Thanks for listening. Have fun coding.